now have our cost curves for our firm and these are going to be the most important of our per unit cost curves as we'll see a little bit later. Um, so we were, remember, assuming that we had some fixed input in the short run. The short run is defined by having some fixed input so eventually we can change that fixed input if we want to. So if we're going to use the example of a factory we could change the size of that factory um, in the long run and then you're always going to be in a new short run because if I let's say I expand the size of my factory, I'm now in a new short run with this new size factory as my fixed input, so I'm always in a short run. It's just that in the long run I can make adjustments to any fixed input, so everything is variable in the long run. Uh, so these are going to be, this is going to be my representative firm. Now this ATC curve that we're looking at is for a given fixed, at least one fixed input, so there's some fixed size factory or whatever our fixed input is. So this is our short run ATC curve that we're looking at and right and we're usually going to be concerned with what's going on in the short run with this firm and now we're going to decide okay in the long run maybe I want to change this fixed input I want to expand my factory contract it whatever um, so I want to now be able to change this ATC curve to get on a different ATC curve so a different size factory remember what makes up this this curve is that we have those fixed costs, which gives us average fixed costs plus our variable costs, gives us average, this average total cost. So for a large factory, larger factory, for example, we might have a larger fixed cost, but obviously there are cases where it might make sense to have a larger factory. So now we're going to look at this long run choice. So suppose we have these different size factories that we're choosing from. Um, let's say this is like a small, medium, and large factory. Um, because if you can imagine, you know, if I extend the, all of these curves outward, I didn't do that on this picture, um, but let's say this large factory, you know, would start the cost all the way up here somewhere, I would have really large fixed costs that I would have to spread out for this large factory, and so that's being reflected in this ATC curve that would start way up here somewhere, whereas this maybe is smaller, um, so it might make sense if I'm only expecting to produce a smaller amount of output, I'd want to choose the smaller size factory because there's no point in incurring all these massive fixed costs if it's not going to make sense and not going to be producing enough output. Imagine it's like a car factory and I'm going to have a small production line versus a huge production line. You know, I'm going to be buying a lot more machinery and so that, that could be part of my fixed costs as well, um, as well as the actual size of the building, for example. Um, so, so imagine I'm choosing between these three cases and so if I choose this large factory and incur all these fixed costs and buy all these massive machines and I use all that to produce a very small amount of quantity that's going to be very costly so when I go to figure out my average cost I'm going to be all the way up here somewhere um, with very high average cost to produce just a small amount of output. Now it would make sense if I start producing a larger amount of output then I could spread out those fixed costs um, and be somewhere over here you know, if I'm expecting to produce this high quantity of output, then I'd want to have this lower cost as opposed to if I tried to use my small factory and produced a large output. Now we can extend this line outward. You know, I'm way in the diminishing returns range here, and I may not even be able to get out to this point. You know, I may just go vertical over here. But imagine that I could. It's just going to be very costly. Um, so to produce this very large quantity of output with my small factory is also going to be very costly. So I want to make the choice in the long run what's going to be most appropriate, my fixed cost structure, um, for producing that level of output. So and if I'm somewhere in the middle, it's not going to make sense to, to maybe automate quite as much or, or produce or buy um, as many machines or, or the same type of machines possibly. So I have this middle size factory also. So basically, I'm going to make some choice and then in the short run, you know, that, that's what I'm looking at here. This is going to be my short run ATC curve. So I'm just labeling that over here as the short run ATC curve. I'm going to make some choice. I'm going to be stuck there at least for some amount of time that I'm going to call the short run until I can always make another choice later on um, in the long run. So in this case, I'm just making three choices. But obviously, given the amount of output that I expect to produce, I'm going to pick the curve that's going to lower my average cost. So if I expect to produce you know, this much or, or, or this much or, or um, even this much, um, I'm going to choose this smaller size factory. right? So for this particular quantity, 
which curve can I do the best on? Where can I lower my average cost? Well, this is the best I can do, right? If my middle size factory would put me here, the large size factory would put me all the way up here somewhere. So those are my three choices given this particular quantity, right? And it would make sense to produce um, and in that first factory, right? Once I pass this point, now it makes sense to be on this curve. Um, so anywhere over here, it's going to make sense to be in that middle size factory, assuming these are my only three choices, um, because I could produce this middle size output on my first um, size factory, but I'm way in diminishing returns are going to be up here, and and looks like this is kind of the same because I'm not taking advantage of all the the fixed costs that it's going to cost me for this larger factory. So better off doing this middle size, maybe not buy as many machines or whatever the difference is going to be. And then if I produce enough up to this point, now it's going to make sense to have that big fixed cost because I can spread it out enough, lower my average cost, and the best I can do if I'm going to produce a large quantity is be on this curve. So basically in the long run, I want to pick for each, any given quantity, what is my lowest cost going to be? So which curve do I want to be on? And that's what our long run ATC curve is going to be. So basically it's going to be, and, and by drawing it as, as a smooth line here, what I'm really assuming is that there's lots of intermediate steps here. So I could have, you know, a slightly larger factory that's going to hit the curve right here and someone that's a little bit bigger. And so by drawing it like this, I'm really assuming I could make really small adjustments in say the size of my factory or number of machines or something like that. Um, and so in the long run, I could be anywhere on this curve. I'm going to choose the lowest possible average cost I could find given that particular quantity. So if I chose this, I'm not showing it here, but I, I, I might have a, another size factory that's, that's suited just exactly right for that particular level of output. Um, and so the long run average total cost curve is just the, the lowest possible average cost that I could find for any given particular quantity. So I'm going to trace out the points on these different short run ATC curves. Um, now the reason it has this shape is because in the beginning we have what's called economies of scale. Um, and all that means is that we have declining long run average total cost as we produce more. So in other words, there's an advantage to being larger um, in the long run in terms of our average cost. So if I build, if I have a a really small output here, there's only so much I can really do to lower that cost because I'm not taking advantage of the fact of, of producing more output and spreading out those costs. So the best I could do is to be on some short run curve that has relatively high average costs and as I get bigger, now I can take advantage of spreading out fixed costs and buying machinery that automates things and, and so there's an advantage of, of a larger scale. There's economies of scale. So in this range, by having a larger factory or encourage, incurring larger fixed costs, I can lower my average cost of production, my average total cost of production. So in this decreasing range, this is what we call economies of scale. Um, it might have, depending on the situation, a, a range in this in this area here where it's constant. So I might have sort of a middle size factory that hits here and another one that hits here and this one hits here. But the structure of production on this range isn't really changing that much. I'm kind of using the same types of machinery. Um, and so we have constant returns to scale if long run average total cost is constant over this range of output. So we have economies of scale, constant returns to scale, and then we're going to have diseconomies of scale. So here, and now there's a disadvantage of being larger. So there's a cost of, of having such a large factory or building or farm or whatever it is we're talking about here. So it becomes harder to manage things, to coordinate things, so there are certain disadvantages of just being so large that we're just going to have to deal with if we choose to produce this really high level of output. Um, now it doesn't necessarily mean um, we want to avoid that because if it's profitable to produce this huge output we just have to deal with the fact that we have a disadvantage of being so large and the best we could do is to be on some curve that gives us this high, higher average total cost just like over here it just may be that we have some niche product that we're just not going to be able to produce too much of well we're just going to, have to deal with the fact that the way we're producing this thing is going to give us a higher average cost compared to if we could somehow expand production and have a market that would support that level of output um, and lower average costs. So, so again, we're optimizing our long run average costs for any given quantity of output. Um, 
and by drawing it this way I'm assuming we can make tiny adjustments and be anywhere along this curve there's going to be some short run curve that corresponds to any point on this long run curve so these are just the long run choices that I have um, if we wanted to show a more discrete case so suppose there really only were two choices or the three choices that I had over here um, so now my only choice is where do I want to be in the long run well either I could be on this curve you know, it would make sense up to this point and then it would make sense to be on this curve past that point point. and if those are my only two choices and I would just trace out a long run curve like that because um, th those are the only two options that I, that I would have so so being on this long run curve would minimize my average cost for any particular quantity that I would choose and here I'm just making it more of a continuous case where there's lots of short run average total cost curves that I can choose from and in the long run I can be anywhere along this curve.